All right, section 5.7 is inverse trig function integration. So we're going to look at integration with the trig functions. We did derivatives with the trig functions in the last section in 5.6. Um, so the very first thing we're going to take a look at is how to do antiderivatives for some very specific types of um, functions. So the first, second, and third one on here, um, you see some notations that up until now, if you were asked to find the antiderivative for these, you would not have been able to. The only trick or only technique that you had up to this point would have been u substitution and it wouldn't have worked. So the first one is the integral of 1 over, we've got a square root of some number squared minus x squared. That is an arc sign, um, anti, or it becomes an arc sign. The second one is 1 over a squared plus x squared. Notice there's no square root and that's an arc tangent. Yes? It is, and that's the notation your calculator will use, is the sign with the little negative one. Um, my, my belief is that the reason that we try to avoid that is because we don't want that negative one to look like a power. And since we work so much with exponents in calculus especially, that's why we're going to stick with the arc sign notation is for clarity. Yeah. Uh, and then the other one um, is going to look kind of like the first one. We've got that radical in the denominator. We've got the x squared minus a squared, so reverse order underneath um, the radical. And then you've got an x on the outside of the radical. So it almost looks like that one sort of might be a candidate for u substitution because the x squared is underneath the radical and the x is outside. But unfortunately, the x is still in the denominator, which makes it not um, able to be used with u substitution. And that's arc secant. Now you might look at these and you might say, okay, well, where did arc cosine and arc cotangent and arc co uh, cosecant go? Well, if you remember when we did the derivatives of each of those, do you remember how similar the derivatives were to the antiderivatives? I mean, not derivatives to antiderivatives, derivatives to each other, to their co-function. So when we did sine and cosine, they were the same except for a negative sign, right? And we did tangent and cotangent, they were the same except for a negative sign. And when we did secant and cosecant, they were the same except for a negative sign. That's why there's not another arc trig function is because there's really no difference. We just had that negative sign that actually came up as the difference in them. So there's not another trig feature. And that's fantastic because it means there's three to memorize instead of six, right? Absolutely. And of course you see the plus c's on the end of each of these. Okay, so we're going to practice some of these now. Um, one of the things that is going to come up as we practice these in a couple occasions is the need to complete the square. So that is an algebra topic. It's something that you've done quite a ways back. Um, and the first times in which you did it, it was probably something where they had you complete the square to find the vertex of a parabola um, or the solution to, a, to an equation that was quadratic. It's one of the ways of finding a solution to a quadratic equation. And while it has those applications, those applications seem sort of silly at the time. You're like, why don't I just use the quadratic formula? Why would I need completing the square? And this actually gets more to the heart of the purpose of completing the square is that it allows you to do things like this, okay? All right, so let's take a look at this integration. The first thing to identify is which of these three it's going to fit into. So which case, if you will, are we looking at when we look at example number one? It's an arctangent problem. Okay, what tells you when you look at this immediately, this must be arctangent? There's no square root, right? So as soon as I didn't see a square root, it seemed like I have the potential for this being the cotangent. Now, a couple of things to be aware of. Um, the A value is arbitrary. So what is the A value on this problem going to be if you compare it to the sort of the format of the original um, definition? The A value here is 2. So sometimes it's helpful to write that down. You don't have to, but sometimes it's helpful. The other thing is that if you take a look over here, the x here is what's squared, but here I don't have x squared. I have x minus 3 squared, right? So there is actually a u substitution to this problem. It is the x minus 3. Not a very exciting u substitution, as you can see, because the du is 1 dx, right? I mean, there's not a lot going on there. Some of them will have a lot going on in that particular part of the problem. So I want us to be aware of it. Um, I'm going to rewrite this so that it looks a bit more like that tangent form. So instead of writing the 4, I'm going to write it as 2 squared. You don't have to, 
but it's kind of nice. And then I have plus the u squared here, and then the dx is equal to the du, so I'm going to replace that as well. This form is really just like the arctangent form now, right? u in place of x, 2 in place of a. So I can use the antiderivative form to rewrite it. I'm going to have 1 over a, and a is 2. I'm going to have the arctangent. I'm supposed to have u, I'm sorry, x over a. Well, x in my problem here is u. a is 2. And then I have plus c. And just like with any u substitution problem, I need to replace the u with what it actually equals. So I have 1 half arctangent of x minus 3 over 2. And it might be helpful to put this in parentheses just uh, sort of to set it apart from the plus c. If you don't have them, it's okay, but you'll often see it written that way. Okay, any questions on that one? That's it. It's, it's a pretty basic example, but I wanted you to see how we identify all the pieces and where they go. The next problem is much more complicated, actually. Okay, are you guys ready to take a look? All right, so if you were looking at this for the very first time, you probably would try to do u substitution. You see a tangent squared, it's in a denominator, it's underneath a radical, you see another portion of this that has another trig function in it. Um, if you go through and you set u equal to the entire denominator without the square root, so the 25 minus tangent squared, tangent squared is going to involve a um, chain rule, um, and you're not going to end up just getting secant squared. Okay. You might think, okay, well, what about just letting u be the tangent itself? Because then at least I would stand a chance at doing something. And if you did that, you would be on the right track. So if we do let the u be just tangent itself, what would du be? Secant squared, and that is in fact my numerator, right? And it's secant squared, of course, dx. Now, when I identify that, it's not as clean of a u substitution, pro u substitution problem as you're used to because more of it remains. But it's okay. It all of a sudden will clean itself up in such a way that we can use these arc trig functions to finish it out. So I have a square root here. Whoops, let me try that again. Um, 25 is okay, um, but again, I'm going to write it as 5 squared. Okay, just to remind myself that I don't end up accidentally thinking that a is 25, it's not, a is 5, okay? Um, I have minus the u squared because I let tangent be u. And then in the numerator, I just have a 1. Um, so I have 1 du has been replaced with, um, or is replacing the secant squared dx. Right? This is like having 1 du. Okay, this actually has one of the forms of our inverse trig functions. Um, for the integration, which form is it? Sine, tangent, or secant? It's sine, okay? So we're going to have an arc sine function. The arc sine says that there's no coefficient in front. It simply on this one starts out as arc sine. X is what's on top, but in our problem at this point, U is our variable. And A is on bottom, and what is our A value for this problem? It's five. And then I need, of course, my plus C at the end. Now, this is arc sine of tangent, right? Tangent of X over 5 plus C. Now, if this just said arc sine of tangent X, we'd actually be able to use triangles to simplify it like we did in section 5.6, right? But the fact that it's the over 5 part of it complicates things quite a bit. So there's no expectation that we would go any further. This problem is finished at this point. Okay, and most of them get to the point where it is something that's over 5 and there's not another step to simplify. Okay, another feature that we could be taking a look at in, sol in solving these or in evaluating these um, is that we could have a definite integral, right? We have limits of integration on this one from 0 up to the natural log of 5. Um, so we have this extra step at the end that involves plugging the limits of integration in instead of doing the plus C on the end. So up until that point, it's going to feel much like the other problems. Um, 
on this one, you probably notice, and you would probably try to do u substitution. You've got e to the x or thereabouts in a couple of places, right? Yeah, you do. So let's take a look at what we've got going on here. What do you think you might let u be? e to the x. Now, why would I not want it to be e to the 2x? Any thoughts on that? Very good. If I took the derivative of e to the 2x, I'm going to get another e to the 2x. And I only have one e to the 2x in this problem. The other piece is not e to the 2x. Okay? Now, bear with me. This du then is what? What is the derivative of e to the x? e to the x dx. So you might be looking at that and going, okay, well, u and du are like the same thing, so how do I know which one to replace? Well, the one that's in the numerator and that's sort of grouped with the dx, that's going to be the du. Okay, so that's the piece that will be replaced by the du. As I rewrite this, I'm going to leave my limits of integration off, just like always, and we'll deal with them in a minute. So there's my 1 du. I have a 1 plus at the bottom here. Now, here's the problem. I don't have 1 plus u. What do I have? u squared. I have 1 plus u squared. Why is it u squared? Yeah, because there's a 2 right here, yes? And if you'll remember some of your properties of exponents, if you have e to the 2x, it's the same thing as having e to the x squared. It's a multiplication of the exponents. So there's nothing about that that says the 2 has to be done in front of the x or anything like that. We're just separating it and identifying it in a different way. And of course, the nice feature at this point of, as well is that the 1 plus u squared becomes one of the patterns, the forms that we're familiar with from the very beginning. It's arctangent, right? So what is the value for a in this problem? It's actually 1. So I actually have 1 over 1. I know we don't have to write that, but just humor me for the moment. And then this is arctangent of x, which our x is u, over a, which is 1. And then we would have put a plus c, but we're going to evaluate this in a moment, so I don't need to. So really, this is just the arc tangent of u, and u is e to the x, right? And we're evaluating that now that we have it back in terms of x at the natural log of 5 and at 0. So we have the arc tangent of e to the natural log 5 minus the arc tangent of e to the 0. So what is e to the natural log of 5? What is it? It's just 5. So this piece becomes the number 5 because e and natural log, those are inverse operations. So this is really just the arc tangent of 5. Okay, well, arc tangent of 5 is not a unit circle value or anything like that. Okay, so I don't have to simplify that. If I tried, I could get a decimal approximation for it. And that's fine. We can get a decimal approximation if we need to. But this is its exact form. Okay, how about e to the 0? What's that? It is, yes. So this is the arc tangent of 1. Arc tangent of 1 is a unit circle value, so we would be expected to simplify that. Do you remember what the arc tangent of 1 would be? Similar to asking, do you remember what angle gives you a tangent value of 1? A 45 degree angle, which is pi over 4 in radians. So this is the arc tangent of 5 minus pi over 4. <laughs> All right. Any questions on this one? Okay. We're about to get to um, the completing the square stuff that I was telling you about before. Okay. So if you take a look at this particular problem, a couple of things first. Um, can't just be regular u substitution because it'd have to be everything underneath the radical, and I don't have the du for that anywhere else in the problem, right? So we sort of kind of throw that one out the window immediately. And so the only other option, really, that we've discussed at this point is these arc trig functions. And if you take a look at what's underneath that radical, it doesn't quite have the form of any of the arc trig functions. But which one is it most 
like. Okay, so it's not tangent, right? Because there's just there's a square root involved. Is it secant or is it sine? It's got to be sine. Why sine instead of secant? There's not an x on the outside of the radical. Okay, so we have to get this into the form that we can use the arc sine um, feature. And the arc sine feature looks like, well, let me rewrite what you have on the other slide so that we can see it all together on this slide too. So we want this in the form of 1 over the square root of a squared minus x squared dx. Okay, is everybody with me on that? We need to change whatever is underneath that radical so that it has the form a squared minus x squared. So I want to take the negative x squared plus 4x, and I want to complete the square. All right, so the first thing that you have to recognize is that eventually I want this to be subtracting the x squared, right? Okay, so as I'm looking at this, the first thing I want to do is I want to pull the negative out so that I'm subtracting everything with x in it. Okay, so I'm just factoring it out in front. So ignoring everything that's outside the parentheses, just looking at the piece that's inside, so the x squared minus 4x. The way that we complete the square, the key to completing the square, is to take the middle term, that's the linear term, in this case the 4x, and take its coefficient, the 4, negative 4 actually. So take the negative 4, divide it by 2 and square it. That's the key to completing the square. So completing the square, I'm going to write this down for us to remind ourselves. The key to completing the square is to do negative b divided by 2. I'll put 2a here, and I'll talk about what a is since I didn't have one here. Square. Okay, so this is b. I am much more a fan of factoring out anything that was not a 1 in front of an x anyway. The a would be actually out here in front. Okay, um, if there were a coefficient. It's not the negative part of A, it's just A, although it doesn't really matter. But we're taking the middle term, negative 4, dividing by 2 and square it, and if I do that on this problem, what do I get? 4. And I'm going to put the plus 4 in here. Now, as you are very well aware, you can't just go adding and subtracting values to something and not change them, right? You add or subtract and it changes things. So you have to compensate in some fashion if you're dealing with an equation. The way we tend to compensate is we do the exact same thing to the other side of the equation, right? So we don't have an equation here. We're actually trying to simplify an expression. So what do we have to do? Well, what I want first for you to recognize is that you didn't add 4. You added negative 4. Because there's a negative on the outside of the parentheses that also applies to the 4 you just put in. So you added a negative 4, or you subtracted 4 from what you originally had. So if I were to subtract 4, my compensation would be to also add 4 to what I had. Okay? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a plus 4 at the beginning here. So these are compensating for one another based on the fact that I've got a negative outside that affects the 4 that I put on the inside. Is everybody good with that? It feels a little bit different than completing the square before simply because of that negative, and we don't usually have that negative involved when we're dealing with completing the square in algebra. Okay, our goal then is to rewrite this so that it looks like things that are squared. So the 4 is easy, that's 2 squared. I need to rewrite this one so it looks like something squared, but the whole point was that when we put in the plus 4, it will automatically be able to do this, and that's why we chose 4 is that it will factor as such. Yeah. Now, not plus 2 and minus 2. Try again. Yeah, they have to be identical. They'll both be a minus 2. And oftentimes, you will see people not even write this step at all. They'll jump simply to this step I'm about to write here. This is x minus 2 squared. Because it has to factor as a completing this square. That's the whole point in why you added the 4, is to make it do this. It has to make it do this, or you added the wrong number. Okay? So this right here, 2 squared minus x minus 2 quantity squared, 
is the exact same expression as what we originally had. It's equal to it underneath the radical to start with. So I've got an integral. I've got a 2 on the, on the top, and I've got the square root on bottom of 2 squared minus x plus 2 quantity squared dx. I have not done any... Oh, it was minus 2. Thank you. I have not done any calculus. That was all algebra. Well, I guess you could say I wrote down some calculus because I put the interval notation, but I haven't done any calculus yet. Okay, is everybody good so far? I know when we get into some of the algebra stuff that we don't use on a regular basis, sometimes people are like, seriously, I thought I was done with that. Okay, at this point, we're actually able to do u substitution with this particular problem because the x minus 2 is in the location of where I really want it to just say x right here, right? That's what I really want it to say. So if I'm working on this problem, in fact, I'm going to go to the next slide because there's just too much going on on this one. Okay, so if I'm working on this problem now, I want to identify what my u is. And so what is my u in the problem now that I've gotten it into the form that I really do want it in? It's x minus 2. And again, this is not a very exciting u. I mean, it's not near as exciting as when it was tangent just a minute ago. <laughs> but what is the derivative of x minus 2? 1 dx. So as I'm working with this integral, I've got the integral. I've got the 2 on top, or you could put the 2 out in front if you would prefer. I kind of like to put the 2 in front. I think I'm going to, just for fun. Um, and then I have the 1 du at the end. Got the square root out here. I have 2 squared minus u squared. And I know that that 2 is my a value, right, for the actual um, form that I'm looking for. So if it helps you to write that down, do that. A is 2 in this problem now. All right, so this has the form to be able to use for arc sine. I believe that's the one we said it was, right, arc sine. The 2 in the front is not a part of arc sine. The 2 in the front is from the original problem. It's the 2 that we're carrying along, the coefficient, okay? But then we have the arc sine, because it does not have any coefficient of its own. The arc sine of what? u, because that's our x, u over 2. And then plus c, because this one is not a definite integral. And then, of course, our last step is to replace the u with what the u is in our problem, which was x minus 2 over 2. Okay, we are done with this problem. I will say it aloud. I will not write it down. Whoops, that was weird. I will say it out loud. I will not write it down. Um, I know you guys are proficient um, at your algebra, but don't get carried away and think that you can do things you can't do, like distribute a 2 from the front through to the inside of the arc sign. You can't do that, okay? It's like taking a 2 on the outside of the radical and just sticking it underneath the radical. Not okay. Okay, so really, we really are done. There's nothing I can do to simplify the 2 that's on the outside with the 2 that's in the denominator on the inside or anything like that, okay? Any questions on that one? Alrighty.